Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, our next speaker for today is uh, Arson Sobral. And uh, he's going to talk about improved regularity results for a class of non-local L0 elliptic equations synthetic profiles. Uh, welcome, Arson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. I would like to thank everybody here in the audience uh, for their presence. And also, I would like to thank also the organizing committee for the, for the opportunity. Okay. So today, I'm going to talk about, as Daniel said, improved regularity results for a class of non-local L0 elliptic equations through asymptotic profiles. And this is a joint work with Professor Disney, okay? And the idea in this talk is to establish C1, sigma minus one minus regularity estimates to the Scott solutions of this equation right here. Provided the main operator here satisfies an um, asymptotic regime, okay? So, Besides the point of view of the mathematics, the pure mathematics, what are the, the interests in studying non local equations? Where do they appear? Uh, it happens that they appear in many places of our daily life, such as stochastic processes and infinitesimal generators. They appear also in quantum mechanics. Uh, when we want to model, for example, stationary, stationary waves. In financial modeling, in what we call the uh, payoff models, and in image processing, in a process called TV painting. There are a lot more of applications in real life, but uh, these are interesting enough to discuss, discuss a little bit here, okay? So, uh, what is the, the regularity background for solutions of this equation here? Uh, everything started with Kafarel and Sebastian in 2009 in a paper on and applied mathematics. And their object of study was discuss solutions of this equation here under the structure of non-local electricity. And to define this, this structural hypothesis, we need to know what are the, the external operators, okay? Uh, the same idea for, uh, they apply the same idea for the local case, they define the, the extreme operators as the supremum and the infimum over um, a class of linear operators on this form right here. Um, where this function here, K, we call kernel. It, it controls the, the jumps of the, the function U. And the elitist condition, no local elitist condition, is this inequality here, provided U and V are regular enough. Okay. And in this paper, Tafarel and Sebastian proved that for this class of kernels, uh, interesting tools are available. For example, um, compar comparison principles, an Alexander Beckman Pucci estimate, the non local version of it, of course, and Harak inequality, Helder estimates, and for a subclass of this class L0, they are able to prove C1 alpha. Two years later, uh, the same authors uh, in a paper on ARMA extend their pre results for L0 ellipse equations. The main operator here is L0 with coefficients and a bounded right hand side. The main operator here must satisfy proximity conditions to one operator in class L1, which is this class of kernels here. And they establish a very interesting approximation theorem that shares the C1 alpha regularity, okay? The same authors in a paper on Nanos 
prove a version of the Evans Krigoff theorem for no local equations. They prove C sigma plus alpha granularity estimates for a homogeneous equation, which is an infinite over an, uh, an infinite of linear operators. Uh, which are elliptic to a subclass of this class L1 here, which is called L2. Okay. Uh, we have a paper from Sam in 2015 in which he proves C sigma plus alpha regularity estimates for now or general concave equations, but with rough curves, that is uh, L0 elliptic equations. And the main difference here between this paper from uh, Kafarel and Subversion and this paper from Sam is that to deal with the lack of regularity of the kernels here, he needs to he needs uh, he needs to assume some regularity at the boundary of the equation. Okay. Uh, we also have this paper from Dan Skrivensov in CPD, uh, in which he proves C1 alpha regularity results for equations v, uh, in which are C1 alpha regularity results for equations uh, only L0. And our task here is to improve this value of alpha up to sigma minus one minus. Okay. And there are a lot more of papers, but uh, I bring these papers here for, for discussion, okay? So I'll give now some preliminaries that we are going to need to give our main definition. And the first that the first definition is the, the notion of spot solution. And we say that a function u is a subsolution to this equation here. And we write this inequality if uh, whenever a function, a C2 function phi touches you from above in a point x0, and we choose as test function this function psi here, we have this inequality. Uh, the idea to define super solution is the same by reversing the inequalities. Okay? So, Kafarel and Sylvester in their paper, they show that we can change. For the set of test functions, this function phi here for second order polynomials. And we can, we can take n as a ball center of the touching point. And in fact, this is just elasticity and Taylor's uh, approximation theorem. Okay? Another definition that is going to be important is the notion of convergence. And we say that a sequence of non-local operators, IK, converges weakly in a domain omega if um, for every point in omega and every test function of this form here, where P is a second order polynomial and H is a function in this weighted space, uh, we have uniform convergence in half of this ball here. And this notion of weak convergence, weak convergence is important to establish, for example, uh, stability results. And uh, compactness result due to Kafarel and Sylvester. For example, if we have a sequence of a general sequence of operators uh, of L0 elliptic operators, uh, they establish that they are always weakly convergent. In this, in this sense here, up to subsequence. Okay. Um, these two definitions are the basics so that we can present the main definition of our paper, which is the notion of the non local recession of parity. What is the idea? Let's say we have an um, uh, L0 elliptic operator I. To this operator, we can associate a family of operators, I mu, which is basically this scaling, scaled operator here. Due to the elasticity hypothesis, uh, this family here lies 
in the same LHST class of the main operator here. So we define as the local recession operator, the weekly limit, as I defined it before, uh, as bill goes to zero. Of course, uh, this weekly limit might not exist, um, but Caffarelli and Silvestri proved that along subsequences, this local recession operator always exists. And this convergence here holds in the weekly sense, as I said before. So, um, the definition of non-local recession operator is the weekly limit of this, this family here as mu goes to zero. But if it does not exist, we take as recession operator any of its subsequent limits. Okay. That's the definition of, of non-local recession operator. But uh, can we say something more about the the recession here and yes in fact we can say two things and the first thing is that we can produce an homogeneity of degree one of the recession operator provided the the, the recession is unique and also we can say something about the mode of convergence of convergence on the sequence uh, I knew in the previous slide. In fact, we have this lemma here uh, that I be a L0 uniform elliptic operator or just L0 elliptic operator and assume the homogeneous of degree one of the recession. Then for every epsilon, there exists delta such that this inequality here holds for every less or equal than epsilon in half of the ball BR or every test function of this form satisfying this condition here. Okay. In fact, uh, to deliver this lemma, after we know that this the, the family I mu is weakly convergent to the to the recession operator, uh, we only need to analyze on what are the dependencies of the models of continuity of these functions here. Okay. And in fact, this notion, this, this idea of, of recession uh, has a local counterpart. And we, need to, we have indicated three papers here that were very inspiring for us. That is a paper from Sebastian Teixeira in 2015, a paper from Pimentel and Teixeira in 2016, and a paper from Pimentel and Santos in 2018. Okay. In this, along this talk, um, in the paper, what are our main assumptions? Um, the main assumptions are the L0 latency of the main operator and translation invariant. Uh, that is, we are not considering the case with coefficients, just for simplicity. Any recession has sigma plus epsilon estimates, and we have this scaling condition here. Uh, that I'm going to discuss a little bit later. Okay. Uh, but before, let me give some some examples where our assumptions apply. The first example is the, the minimum of two operators, uh, where this operator tau i here is, has this expression, where tau i is an elliptic, a linear elliptic operator to the class L2 so that the recession and satisfies the evans law theorem from Caffarelli's subversion. The second one, uh, we take a finite family of functions GK satisfying this condition here. And, and here finite is just for simplicity. And we find this, this non-local operator. It is a non-local operator to the class L0 such that the recession is the fractional of function. The third example is a local disguise for non-local equations. And it goes like this. Let's say we have a function from R n to R u 
and define this quantity here, okay? Where EI and EJ are the vectors from the canonical basis of Rn. And now consider this symmetric matrix here. Now take any lambda lambda lead operator such that the recession goes to the trace function and consider this operator here. This operator is um, L0 elliptic such that the recession is the fractional operation. And we highly indicate this paper here from Noiru in CPD to, to another interesting results about this type of, of equations, okay? So let's go back to assumption A3 and try to, and let me try to explain why do we need it. Uh, consider this example here. Let's say f is a function, as a real function, as in example two. And let's say u is a solution of this equation here. Notice that this operator here, um, it satisfies assumption A1 is f0 elliptic operator and translation divide. The recession function of this operator is the fraction of Laplacian, but it does not satisfy the assumption A3. But what is the problem? The problem is the following. Uh, let's say we want to prove C1 alpha for this function here, okay? To prove C1 alpha, we need to analyze which type of equation this scaling here solves. It will solve a, a very good equation with this operator here, I lambda, where I lambda is this operator here, this local scaling operator here. After the change of variables, uh, the form of the operator is this right here. And notice that since lambda is less or equal than one, strictly less than one, in fact, it is going to zero, this factor here uh, is getting bigger and bigger. And therefore, we need, we will need the smaller values of mu uh, than the original the original operator and therefore uh, we get that scaling it we will delay the convergence to the recession operator for iterative methods uh, which is the case here okay? and that's why we need to force this assumption a tree uh, now we can discuss a little bit about the improved real life theorem. And it in fact is an approximation scheme. And it is an iteration of this flatness lemma that I'm going to state here. Let's say we have a viscosity solution to this, to this scaling equation here. The function V has a mod uniform model of continuity in VR is where this R here is big. And V satisfies this growth condition here, okay? And even epsilon, there exists eta, such that if this holds, then there exists an I star amorphic function H, and such that a V minus H is epsilon flat in V1, okay? And the idea to prove this flatness lemma here uh, goes like this. We, need, we assume it is false. We assume it, the, the, this lemma does not hold. To find sequences Rj, Vj, Fj, Uj, and Fj such that Vj solves this equation with Rj going to infinity, Fj going to zero, uj going to zero, eta j to zero, but uh, n function vj is epsilon far away in the Elephant norm of any I star harmonic function h in v1. Okay, and the idea is since vj has a uniform models of continuity 
BRG uh, from Arsenal Ascoli, we add that it converges, it, it converges uh, up to subsequence in compact sets of Rn and therefore almost everywhere in the entire space. Uh, it also converges in the in the weighted space due to the, due to the growth condition, and this this sequence of uh, scaled operators here converges quickly to the recession function, and therefore we pass to the limit in this equation here to get a quantization. Okay, and the improved regularity theorem is an iteration of this flatness lemma, and it goes like this. Let's say we have a viscosity solution of this uh, equation here, where I satisfies the three assumptions at the beginning. And therefore, we get that U is T1 alpha and B1 half for every alpha less, strictly less than sigma minus one in holds a uniform estimate. And the idea of the proof is that we scale the equation one time so that the flatness lemma apply, and that's it. We don't need to scale it anymore. We construct a sequence of affine functions, okay, uh, approaching you in a C1 alpha profile. And now the key observation uh, is to analyze which type of equation these scalings here satisfy. It will satisfy a very good equation with a good bounded right hand side here and this operator i mu k where i mu k is this operator here uh, which from assumption a3 can be written in this form and that's why we need this assumption a3 here because uh, Due to the range of alpha, this factor here, lambda to the power of k plus um, sigma minus one minus alpha, does not increase the value of u. And therefore, and the flatness lemma we will apply to this scalar operators here, i mu k, and the proof falls. Uh, I did not bring the entire proof here because it's uh, quite a uh, quite long. And my presentation finishes here. And thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, I also for, for the very nice 